I have talked to many hams that say they can't get on the HF bands because their QTH is in a deed-restricted subdivision. I believe that there's not a QTH that can't have an effective HF antenna. The approach to these antenna problems is to put up whatever you can and put a tuner at the feed point. Technically, the tuner must be an antenna coupler, not a feed line transformer. Many hams will put up a dipole or a long wire and feed it with 50 ohm coax and put a tuner in the shack. This won't work very well because a lot of your power will be lost in the mismatched coax. However, if you put the tuner at the feed point, the transmission line will see 50 ohms on each end and will send 100% of your power to the antenna no matter what it is. The backbone of these stealth antennas is the automatic antenna tuner. The best one is the SGC230 antenna coupler, which requires one amp of 12 volt power and is weatherproof. The LDG Z11 Pro 2 will work well and can be battery operated on AA batteries for many months, but it's not weatherproof. And, of course, there are others that can be used. Since you don't have to be at the tuner to twist the knobs, you can put it anywhere, like the feed point of that hard to see wire you've managed to hoist into the air. You can use wire as fine as 22 gauge, but 16 or 14 gauge is best. Here are the basic types of antennas that you can try to fit to your QTH. These antennas should tune all of the amateur bands from 80 to 10 meters, Sometimes you might get lucky and be able to add 6 or 160 meters. It's best to have it not resonant on any ham frequency, which will avoid any extremes of input impedance as you tune through the bands. If your antenna fails to tune on the bands you want, just change the length. Unless you want to spend the big bucks, you'll be limited to 100 watts. Don't be discouraged. The efficiency of the feed line and the auto tuner will give you a signal stronger than most hams, tuning an amplifier through a tuner in the shack. And of course, your receive signal will also be better. The first is the easiest, a vertical. You might be lucky and have a nearby tree. It's not critical that the wire be exactly vertical. It can be off by as much as 45 degrees. You can also use a 28 foot jack kite pole. The sections can be glued together with gutter cement and the wire wrapped loosely around the pole to keep it in place. A three foot piece of three quarter inch water pipe can be driven into the ground next to your house to support the jack kite pole. You just pick up the pole and slide it over the pipe. The tuner is placed at the bottom of the pole and a couple of ground rods and some wire around the foundation will serve as a counterpoise. The more the better. When not in use, you lay the pole along the foundation of your house or a fence where it's out of sight. Since it's not a permanent structure, it's not in the deed restrictions. If the deed Nazis complain, just put it down and of course back up when they leave. After a while, you will probably get away with just leaving it up. Also, easy is the random wire. Put the tuner under the eave of your house and run a wire anywhere you can. Just get it up as high as possible. For the other half of the antenna, run a wire down to the ground to a ground rod or connect to a wire around the foundation of your house. If you're on the second floor, just run a wire to the foundation and a ground rod. Its length will serve as the other half of the antenna. Another possibility is a loop. Since loops radiate off the sides, make the loop in the vertical plane unless you want to warm the clouds or bother the birds. If it is fed on the bottom, its polarization will be horizontal. If it's fed on the side, it will be vertically oriented. A good size is 40 to 60 feet in circumference. Lastly, the common dipole will work well, but you will need two high supports. Since you need the tuner at the feed point, you'll have to put it up in a tree or on a pole. Both sides of the dipole don't have to be the same length, and it could be in the inverted V configuration. Try to make the dipole wire in the vicinity of a half wavelength on the lowest frequency you want to work, but it's not critical. To get power to the tuner, you must use bias T's or batteries. If you use the LDG Z11 Pro 2, you will have to put it in a weatherproof housing. 
It is important to keep the coax feeding your tuner from becoming part of the antenna. This can be done with a ferrite choke or a coil of coax about 7 to 10 turns, 6 inches in diameter. A spark gap across the feed point to ground is also a good precaution. It can be any gimmick device, even a spark plug, with about a tenth of an inch gap. I have several radio club friends who have tried these antennas and have had great success with them. These antennas made these hams part of the worldwide HF community. Come on and join them.